typical cells that I described in the previous two videos are a generalization and describe only the basic structures found in an average animal, plant or bacterial cell. However, multicellular organisms contain many different cell types that have these basic structures such as a cytoplasm, a nucleus or a cell membrane, but also have additional structures that allow them to carry out a particular function. Cells that are adapted to a particular function are called specialised cells, and nearly all the cells in your body are specialised by stem cells. Stem cells are undifferentiated and unspecialised. When they receive instructions from the environment, they switch certain genes on and off, and differentiate to become specialised for a particular function. For example, a stem cell might develop a tail to enable it to swim to a female egg, or develop cilia, allowing it to move substances. There are three specialised cells mentioned in the edX cell specification. You need to be able to draw and label these cells, and you also need to be able to state why each subcellular structure allows the cell to carry out its function. So what are these cells? Well, they're a sperm cell, an egg cell, and ciliated epithelial cells. So let's take a look at the sperm cell first. The sperm cell is specialised for sexual reproduction, and is adapted to transport the male's DNA to the female's egg. It has four features that make it perfect for this job. The first is an acrosome. This is found in the streamlined head of the sperm and contains lots of enzymes that digest the membrane of the egg cell, allowing the sperm to travel into the egg with its cargo of DNA. The sperm cell has a haploid nucleus. This means it contains half of the DNA held by a normal body cell. So whilst the normal human body cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 2 times 23, it contains 46 chromosomes in total, the sperm cell only contains one chromosome from each pair, so 23 chromosomes in total. And on fertilisation, when the egg that also contains 23 chromosomes fuses with the sperm cell, their DNA is added together to make a total of 46 chromosomes, which is the same number found in a normal body cell. Just a quick note for your exam, all sperm cells, whether they be from a kangaroo, an elephant, all contain half the number of chromosomes of a normal body cell. So don't let this throw you in your exam. Sperm cells have a middle section containing lots of mitochondria because swimming to an egg takes a lot of energy and of course a long tail that also allows the sperm cell to swim. So the next cell you need to know about is the object of the sperm's affection, the egg cell. This too is specialised for sexual reproduction and it is adapted to hold the female's half of the DNA to nourish the embryo after fertilisation and during the early stages of development. The egg has a haploid nucleus like the sperm cell containing half of the DNA required to make a whole cell upon fertilisation. And again, watch out for those questions in your exam that might ask you about a random animal's egg. Don't let this throw you. You know that an egg contains half of the chromosomes present in a normal cell. The egg has a nutrient-rich cytoplasm. This feeds or nourishes the developing embryo, ensuring that it can continue to grow. And finally, the egg has a very special cell membrane that is able to change its structure once the sperm cell has entered the egg. These changes block any other sperm cells from getting in and ensure that the resulting embryo has the right amount of DNA. So the last cell type that you need to know about in detail is the ciliated epithelial cell. This is specialised for moving materials and is adapted to line surfaces of organs, moving substances across them in one direction. The crucial feature that allows this cell type to carry out its function is the cilia. These are found on top of the cells. Cilia are hair-like structures that be carrying whatever is on the surface of these cells along them in a single direction, in one direction. Cilia to epithelial cells are found in several places throughout the body. They line the airways, trapping particles of dust um, and germs in the mucus which sits on the top of these cells. And ciliated epithelial cells move this mucus away from the lungs up to the mouth where it can be swallowed or spat out and this is the body's way of preventing harmful particles reaching the lungs and causing infection and disease. And just to note these cells also line the inside of the fallopian tubes and here they help to move the egg down towards the uterus. 
So just to summarise the three cell types that you need to know about in detail, the sperm cell, which is specialised to transport the male's DNA to the female's egg. It has an aquasome in the streamlined head, a long tail, mitochondria-rich middle section and haploid nucleus. The egg cell that holds the female's DNA, nourishing the embryo as it develops. It has several adaptations, including a haploid nucleus, a nutrient-rich cytoplasm, and a special cell membrane that is able to change its structure after fertilisation. And finally, ciliated epithelial cells have hair-like cilia, making them ideal for moving substances. So before I finish, I just want to mention something about questions you might get asked about specialised cells. Whilst the edX cell specification mentions the three cell types that I have just described, and you'll probably get some really obvious questions about these cell types, but don't be surprised if you're presented with some unfamiliar and unlabeled cells and get asked to choose which mystery cell is best adapted to a particular function. For example, you might get presented with two mystery cells, one of which contains maybe more mitochondria than the other, or is longer than the other, or more branched. And you might be asked to decide which cell is most likely to be a muscle cell or a nerve cell, for example, based on the structures or features that you can see. Now, answering these types of questions really relies on you applying your knowledge of subcellular structures and using a bit of common sense. So if a cell has lots of mitochondria, it's likely to be a cell that needs to move or needs a lot of energy, like a muscle cell. Long cells are good for communicating or contracting across long distances, so maybe like a muscle cell or a nerve cell. And cells that branch allow networks to form between cells and are good at communicating with other cells. And finally, those with a large surface area are usually good at nutrient uptake or, or water uptake or exchanging substances, like a, like a root hair cell. If you would like some free GCSE revision notes that accompany this series of videos, please head over to my website, www.drmeclever.com. You'll also find my revision guides here. And if you want to say hello and get updates on my latest work, scrollable revision notes and freebies, you can follow me on Instagram or other social media under the handle at DrMeClever. And finally, if you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share. Thank you.